10 years ago, Dengue Fever uh, was born out of Los Angeles. Uh, Zach and Ethan, two very old friends of mine, called me up one day. We went down to Long Beach, which is the largest population of Cambodians outside of Cambodia. And they basically said, hey, it, man, we got about 10 singers lined up. Please come on down, sit in on bass. I was, I was in another band called the Radar Brothers, so I wasn't really ready to commit to a new band. And I'm all, okay, I'll, I'll sit in and play bass. Let's go, let's check it out. So we went to Long Beach and probably about the 10 worst singers of all times came to these rehearsals and it was like a very bad idea. And afterwards we were all kind of depressed after about two or three different tryouts down in Long Beach looking for a Cambodian singer to kind of to base some music off of the 60s psychedelic Khmer music which you're really familiar with. And uh, so after a few uh, tryouts we thought it was really we're like, we're, we're not so sure about this and Zach especially Zach, is like, I have this singer, Chomni Mall. She's promised to come down every time, but she has not come, but let's try one more time, and hopefully she'll show up. So we went down there, and Chomni Mall showed up, and as soon as she uttered a sound out of her voice, all of us kind of looked around at each other and kind of said, maybe this is a good idea, you know? And so with her voice, and us wanting to kind of make this music that was more raw, kind of based off of that initial energy. Because a lot of the Cambodian music, which you've heard, it's very synthopop, you know, and very light, you know. And they, you know, Sinsista Muth is still the most famous singer and songwriter, and they play his songs, but in a style that's more, you know that style, it's just not quite, doesn't have the soul and the heart. And so uh, we started playing, we played in the indie rock clubs in LA, you know, just like little dive bars initially. And from the very first show, it's like the crowd reaction was insane. You know, people going crazy, rolling around the stage. So we kind of knew we were, we were onto something. At the time, it was kind of uh, um, what we call shoegazer music, you know, big wall of sound kind of music, where it's like bands in LA and in Silver Lake, Echo Park, where we're from, were kind of playing this music that was more, you know, soundscapes and wall of sound, and it didn't really focus and didn't really like captivate, you know. And I love that music, but we kind of wanted to do something that was breaking out of the normal, you know. I mean, like we just wanted to do something that was just from left field, you know. And you know, when Nimal joined the band, she was a Cambodian girl, a mall girl. You know what I mean? She was so different from us in every way that it, it made us excited. And the people that saw us saw that when they looked at the stage. And it's not much different now. I mean, we're like family now, but we are completely different, you know. But through the music and the art, something, something happened that works. You know, we love each other. You know, I mean, we've been a band for a decade. I think we put out four records and a bunch of EPs and singles and stuff like that. You see that our first album was based on those 60s covers, then the rest has been original material. And so out of that came this thing where, you know, we don't care about Cambodian, we don't care about this, we don't care about, you know, whatever. We'll bring an African, Indonesian, Thai, um, Indian, you know what I mean? Uh, punk rock, surf, guitar is like one of the main ingredients of our music. It's like, we don't care. It's like whatever we're listening to today or tomorrow, we'll write a song about it. I 
Jamal actually has never been a songwriter before. And so it's like, you know, we're coming up with melodies and then she turns them into her own style of melodies. And we'll write, we'll say, Nima, like, you know, tell us about your experiences in life and what was it like, like as a child. And she'll dig back and start, you know, putting together words and then we'll help her with, with the poetry of it, you know. Because, you know, sometimes um, songs are literal and doesn't leave much for people to, to listen to or grab on lyrically. And so over 10 years, Nima's getting the idea of that, that, you know, allegory and poetry can be um, can be put together into song and doesn't need to mean you know I love you you love me why are you sitting in the corner don't you love me you know like that was kind of where she had come from lyrically and I think through time it's nice working on original material and having them all come in with ideas and kind of twist together some childhood memories or even current memories into songs. Zach, our guitar player, is the main um, lyricist, but we found um, when we allowed Nimal to be more natural in her own style, and you know, maybe our second record um, is kind of half like really our stiff compositions and half more loose stuff. And we're starting, we've learned over the years that hey, you know, when Nimal kind of grabs holes and just kind of, you know, we just kind of give the songs time, she's, she's really amazing at, at coming up with stuff, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, a friend of his is a uh, um, luthier, a guitar builder, and um, and he's all Zach. You know, I want to make you a guitar. What do you want? You know. So Zach was thinking. He's like, you know what I want? I want a chapai on the bottom, and a jazz master up top. His friend spent about probably eight months building that thing for him, and um, uh, Mel, uh, Mel Bergman is his name, and uh, he is just an amazing guitar builder. And he's a novice, I mean he's new at it, but he, he was so uh, attuned to detail. And he's got, he's, uh, he's an amazing, he plays in a surf band, this guy, Mel, and he's got a lot of friends, and those friends really kind of like helped shape through his vision shape this thing. His and Zach's vision. Yeah, it's a pretty awesome guitar. We call it the Master Dong. Half Jazz Master, half Japai Dong Bang.
Yeah, let it flow. I mean, I think that's the whole idea about expression is that you can't really, um, you know, you just gotta let it flow, whatever it is, you know? It's like, we went on tour with Sayon Kuti, uh, African musician, and we played a few festival dates together. Started hanging out, you know, backstage or whatever, and got really heavy, heavily influenced by the rhythm and the beats. And, the, you know, it's just irre irresistible, just, just, just the pocket and the grooves are so heavy. <laughs> And Nimal, our singer, she's way into Bollywood, you know, so we, so we bring in some of those Indian influences and the melodies and things like that, which is, you know, I mean, similar culture between, you know, the whole Buddhism and the Hindu and stuff, and kind of, you know, the Indian influence here, you know, it's like the melody, you could hear it. Tiger phone card off our last album was very, uh, you know, it's a, it's a love affair between a, a, a woman from Phnom Penh and, and New York and a man from New York, and it kind of, uh, it's kind uh, of, it's kind of an anthem, you know, it's kind of, a, you know, the whole concept and the idea of uh, uh, creating be beauty out of two different worlds, you know, I mean, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of what happened with us. We're gonna let the thing flow. We're gonna be more organic with our sound. You know, kind of let things vamp. You know what I mean? And let, let ideas roll. I, I think on our next album, we're gonna spend a lot more time jamming and less time writing. You know, we're just gonna let the music, the songs kind of come out of themselves. And um, get from point A to point B, you know, with not many stops and jerks. Just, I think, I think it might just be uh, more of a chill out record, I think kind of next. I, I think I think we got enough rockers under our belt. I think we're going to kind of maybe loosen it up and let Yamal's voice just kind of float over the music. We have our own studio, so sometimes we construct a song, deconstruct it, rebuild it. Sometimes it happens in one go. You know, it's, it's a kind of a, uh, it's completely different than live. But I love the process. I love the studio.
riding together. Yeah. Yeah, Ben did our last, uh, Ben is this young kid who's a good friend of my sister's, did our last music video. Uh, John Prazi, who has worked on many Cambodian projects here, directed one of our videos. Um, some of the stuff you see, you'll find on YouTube are like from, you know, TV appearances and, you know, stuff like that. Um, we also have done some studio work and invited some people into, this, into our studio to uh, film us. You know, we edit pieces out of that, you know, um, out of the actual live music and the live footage. So, you know, just, it's kind of, uh, I consider the visual aspect of what we are just as much as the audio, you know. I, I love art, you know, I love graphic art. Um, you know, Zach and myself both studied art in school, and it, it's just, uh, it's kind of something, you know, it's kind of hand in hand, you know. I, I think if you're a musician and you don't have an artistic, a visually artistic vision for your band, then it's, uh, you're missing out on, on the fun. My fourth time back over the years, and um, first came here in 95. To see it now, it's like a, it's a world of difference. It's, it's pretty amazing. And I think it's really good, you know? I think a lot of people wish for the old Cambodia, like, oh, I remember when it was rough and wild, you know? But I also remember when people were, you know, crippled and couldn't get a wheelchair. You know, I remember when Phnom Penh was dirt, you know what I mean? So I think the progress is, uh, is, uh, is sweet. I, I, th I think a lot of people are left behind, but I think a lot of, a lot of Cambodians are, are able to find a little bit, something a little better for themselves, you know? I, I don't know, I, I think it's pretty wild. I could imagine, but I don't. I don't think I will. I don't think it's for me. But I love. I love to come visit.